All right, and we are live here today. Um, how's it going, everybody? My name is Junior Ann. I just want to welcome you all back over to the Daily Digital. Uh, today is July the 18th, 2022, and I'm here just to inform you all about all the new technology that's going on in our digital world. Uh, today, we have a few things to discuss. Uh, the first one, well, actually, pretty much all of them are all about cryptocurrency today. Uh, I found a lot of articles that have been brewing in the past couple of um, weeks and months that I want to share with you all. And then the last one is also about a little bit summit that's going on for all of the AI, artificial intelligence uh, enthusiasts out there. You definitely want to be in touch with this one. And then we also have the word of the week. Uh, so stay tuned and we'll jump right into it. All right, so let's get started here. Today we have first the Transform Summit. Uh, I've never actually heard of the Transform Summit, but it looks like it is a uh, basically all about artificial intelligence, um, technology, technology, data, and stuff like that. Um, let's see here. Transform returns in person. Whoops, I guess it just went away. I was trying to read. Da, 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 da. Yeah, so Transform returns in person and virtually... Uh, the number one publisher for AI coverage, Venture B, returned with their flagship event, Transform, the leading event on applied AI for enterprise, business, and decision makers. Why do they have that going so fast? Uh, during this event, industry experts will come together for two full weeks to provide comprehensive coverage across the breadth and depth of the world of applied AI, as well as industry-focused vertical tracks in healthcare, finance, retail, manufacturing, and security. There we go. All right. So, yeah, again, if you guys have not heard about the Transform Summit, it's really all about artificial intelligence. Um, heck, I guess I could have just read it down here. <laughs> it's really all about artificial intelligence um, and, you know, the security services, data and stuff like that. Uh, it is being located currently in San Francisco in California. Um, I believe it starts July 19th tomorrow. And then it runs all the way through uh, about like two weeks. So the end of July, like the 28th or something like that. Uh, we'll check out the schedule here. I just want to kind of scroll down on their homepage. Uh, it is going to be live event, but it's also going to be virtual. Uh, you can take out look at a couple of these speakers here. And yes, yeah, so I want to go over here to um, attend. I'll click on this earlier. Why attend? Um, and it's essentially the largest, I'm assuming the largest event um, that has been going on around the AI technology world. Uh, you're going to join 3,000 of your AI and data peers uh, in Transform 2022. It's the first ever hybrid Transform event, uh, bringing the best of both in-person and virtual event world together. Um, so I'm really excited for it. I think it's the last day or the last week or something like that where they're going to really be talking about uh, AR and VR technology. Uh, here are a couple of top reasons to attend. I'll let you guys kind of read over through all of these. Um, but yeah, meet in person, participate in networking events, listen to over 10 hard-hitting keynote sessions, um, hear executives from companies sharing successful strategies, uh, join women in AI, which is my opinion uh, is going to be really, really big. I don't see a whole lot of women inside of the technology space. Um, let alone artificial intelligence, you know, virtual reality, stuff like that. So it's really good to see a uh, woman taking a step up for that. Uh, top reason to 10, over six virtual summits. Um, again, you're going to be joining other virtual registrants, um, create your own agenda, get to ask speakers some questions, networking and visiting sponsor profiles, stuff like that. Uh, here is the schedule. Hope you all can kind of see this here. The first day, July 20th, is all about Data Architecture, architecture Summit. Uh, 21st is the Data Governance Summit. 22nd is the Data Analytic, Analytics Summit. Um, then jump over to the following week, the 26th, which is the AIML Automation Technology Summit. The 27th is the Conversational AI, IVA, and NLP Summit. And the last day, the 28th, is the Edge and IoT Summit, uh, which again is going to be all about like AR and VR technology. <laughs> Um, the AI Executive Summit is the 19th, as I mentioned, tomorrow is going to really kick off. Uh, Transform will be live in San Francisco for the Data and AI Executive Summit. Uh, the following week, or the next couple of days, that same week, 
uh, 20th to the 22nd will be the data week. And then the following week after that will be the AI and edge week. Um, and then also if you want to, you can go over here to where it says agenda, see the full agenda. And you can just kind of take a peek at what's all going these different days. Uh, that way if you, you know, working and need to take a break or lunch break or something like that, you can kind of, um, choose your lunch break hour around some of these different events. Again, they have all the days here, the 20, the 19th, 20th, uh, 21st, 22nd, um, fireside chats. I got a bunch of fireside chats here, 22nd, uh, then jumps to the following week, the 26th, um, anti-fraud stuff, emerging tech meets retail. That's going to be a good one. How Lowe's used emerging technology to transform from a brick and mortar mega store to a omni-channel force. I'm actually kind of interested in that one. Uh, how eBay is helping retailers embrace an immersive 3D visualization. I mean, they've got a lot of really good events going on uh, during the summit. So if you have some time, um, definitely take a look at this uh, schedule, see what you're interested in, and you know, feel free to tap in with me. Uh, let me know what you guys are gonna check out. Uh, again, I myself am going to try and check out all of them. Uh, but definitely I'm going to check out the um, last day where we have talked about all about the AR and VR technology. Uh, that's what I'm really most excited about uh, in regards to this digital world. All right. So the next thing, and again, like I said, most of this is going to be cryptocurrency related. Uh, so I hope you love cryptocurrency, but there's a lot of stuff going on in that space right now. And then one of the things I want to promote is actually in Florida, Miami, Florida. Uh, if some don't know, in Florida, there's a neighborhood called Little Haiti. And Little Haiti is doing something that is very, very interesting. They're not just taking cryptocurrency and I guess making it a known currency or something like that. They're actually taking cryptocurrency and providing it to the community. Um, the way that they're doing that, there's a guy here, he calls himself Captain Haiti. Um, and he's been, you know, trying to help out the community for a while through his companies. Um, that's what, let me see, his companies are called. Uh, through his company, Keep It Haitian LLC, and his partner company, company, the Keeping It Haitian Vendors Association, Martin and other Little Haiti business owners are working to beautify the neighborhood and encourage local investment, even as large-scale developments descend upon the area. Uh, so without reading through the whole entire thing, basically what he's doing is allowing people to um, invest in the Little Haiti coin. And then taking those coins or the investment from those coins and actually beautifying the neighborhood. Um, the price of the Little Haiti coin is currently $30 and they have the website here. And then, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, oh yeah, so we'll go out to volunteers to help clean up one square foot of Little Haiti. And if desired, plant a flag with the name of the coin buyer's business at the site. Uh, people can also earn a coin by volunteering to help pick up trash. So just because you, you know, aren't able to volunteer uh, and donate some money or actually purchase some of the coin, if you just go out and pick up some trash, what they're going to do um, is actually give you guys some coins for that. Um, there are currently 1 million Little Haiti coins and about 96 million square feet encompassing the whole entire Little Haiti neighborhood. Uh, so as more people buy up the currency, Martin says they'll have to sponsor more square footage to earn a whole coin. Um, so this is a really, really good way, in my opinion, in which people can actually give back to the community and also invest in cryptocurrency. They have a wonderful, in my opinion, a beautiful uh, use case for their actual little Miami coin. Um, and I think it will actually go really, really far. Uh, I don't see a lot of communities, or I haven't heard of a lot of communities, not that they're not out there, but I haven't heard a lot of communities out there that have been doing stuff like this. Uh, most people getting into cryptocurrency is all about, hey, how can I become the next Bitcoin or how can I, um, you know, get, <laughs> get my Lamborghini for actually purchasing some of these coins and watching that value rise up. Um, so this is actually really good to see. And then also, I believe Miami uh, is coming out with their own city coin. And, you know, eventually they're going to be doing some partnerships uh, with the Little Haiti coin and stuff like that. So they're actually positioning themselves in a beautiful spot for that. Alrighty, and now for the word of the week. Uh, the word of the week is minting. So if you haven't heard of minting before, it's a term that comes from NFTs um, and other like tokens and stuff like that. But minting essentially, 
the process of actually putting this NFT, and I'm gonna just stick with NFTs because that's the largest one um, that I can think of, but actually taking these N NFTs and minting them on the blockchain. Um, so I found this, I did a lot of research on this because uh, you know a lot of people are kind of confused as to what minting actually is. And I want to kind of get the best description of it. And I found this website here, uh, what.digital. They actually came out with a really, 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 really good description of it in my opinion. Uh, so essentially what minting is, so there's three things about these NFTs. Uh, the first one is the NFT needs to be created. From after that, the NFT is created. You can go ahead and list it um, like on the marketplace or something like that. But then the last thing would be actually minting it. Minting it is actually the process of putting it on the blockchain. So just because your NFT is created, um, it doesn't mean that it is actually minted yet. It's not accessible on the blockchain. So once you actually create your digital asset, uh, whether it be um, whether it be just an image, uh, like some digital artwork, whether it be uh, like some songs, whether it be even real estate, I think I talked about before in another episode about real estate turning into NFTs. Um, those digital assets, and actually he says it here, these assets can be anything, digital art, songs, collectibles, yada, yada, yada. Uh, it is important to note that these assets will determine the type of NFT. Minting an NFT is the process by which you publish that NFT onto the actual blockchain once the NFT is published, it will act as a certificate of ownership for whoever holds it representing the underlying assets previously created and uploaded. Um, so again, that's the key thing here. These NFTs need to be previously created. You need to actually create it. Then you actually need to upload it, AKA list it, um, like on a marketplace such as OpenSea. And then from there, you can go ahead and mint them on the blockchain. So it actually goes through a swift little process here for how you can do that. Um, you can do this two different ways. The first way is through the marketplace. Um, and there's also two ways you can do this. Also, you can do it just a regular way, minting it, or you can do what they call lazy minting. Uh, lazy minting is essentially just going ahead and listing it onto that marketplace, but not actually minting it yet onto the blockchain. And then when someone comes to purchase it, when they actually purchase it, they can go ahead and mint it themselves, paying those gas fees uh, that's associated with it. And then also you can um, bypass the marketplace itself um, and actually go ahead and mint them yourself. Um, yeah, bypass the marketplace and then just go ahead and create and mint the NFT yourself. Um, there's a video here on how to actually do that, um, which is what I'm actually gonna try myself one, one day coming up soon. But this is a little bit harder in my opinion to do it that way. You have more control, more customization um, you can have unique smart contracts for these NFTs if you go ahead and do it yourself and there's less fees that's associated with it. But when you deal with the marketplace, although you have those fees, it's a little bit easier to do it. Um, down here, they have a couple of pros and cons of minting on the marketplace uh, versus minting it actually yourself that you can read through as well. Uh, again, if you mint it yourself, there are no fees and you have full range of customization, uh, but you do need some technical knowledge uh, required to set up those smart contracts and everything. Um, so if you don't want to get those, if you don't want to create the smart contract yourself, you want to do some basic NFT minting and stuff like that, you can definitely go through the marketplace because there's no technical skills required for that. Um, but again, they come with some fees and the NFT marketplace offers limited customizations when it comes to NFT listings. Um, so again, if you've never heard of minting before, it really deals with NFTs. Um, but if you have heard of minting and was just kind of confused on it, hope this does help you out. If you've been thinking about getting into NFTs, uh, hope this helps you a little bit further um, so you that you no longer have to worry about how exactly to get it on the blockchain. You can go to one of these marketplaces and do it. Uh, or if you know somebody that is more techno technological savvy, they can go ahead and do it for you for a whole lot cheaper, depending on how, <laughs> how much they charge. All right, so the next thing here would be again about cryptocurrencies. Uh, if you don't know, there are a couple of states that are going to allow you or are in the process of trying to work it in, uh, of allowing you to pay your taxes, business taxes and stuff like that using cryptocurrency. Uh, the two main ones that are out is Colorado and Utah, I believe. I know Colorado for sure. Uh, yeah, revenue departments in Colorado and Utah, they are implementing programs to enable businesses and individuals to pay their tax bills with virtual currencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Dogecoin. Uh, targeting implementation within a few months. Um, and this was, this was a, 
yeah, this was published July the 5th, 2022. Um, so, I mean, this is just really recent. And this article here is called Crypto, Cra Oops. Crypto Crash Halts Plans by State Houses to Accept Bitcoin Tax Payment. Um, and it's actually a pretty good article. I'm really, I'm really curious to see how this crypto winter has been playing a role on, you know, mass adoption, especially from the government standpoint and stuff like that. But after reading this article, um, it looks like it may not harm it too, too much. Um, let's see here. Uh, while half a dozen states have considered following the lead of Colorado and Utah, whoop de hoo to that, a chorus of fiscal watchdog academics and crypto skeptics is now warning lawmakers against initiatives that might put state treasuries and taxpayers at risk. Um, the reason why they would be at risk is mainly because of the volatility uh, that comes with these cryptocurrencies. So, you know, the price of the currency may go up, it may go down. So let's say, for example, you owe, I don't know, $10,000 in taxes or something like that. Um, you therefore would have to pay that $10,000. But if you pay it in, in cryptocurrency, yeah, you paid it in cryptocurrency that's equivalent to $10,000. But when the market goes back down, those $10,000 might only be worth $5,000 now. So now what is the state supposed to do? Are they going to come out to you and say, hey, you owe us $5,000 more dollars? Or is this going to take a loss on that? Uh, one way about it that they are doing is by using a PSP. Uh, PSP just stands for a payment service provider. And you can kind of see this graphic here um, kind of shows how exactly it's going to work. So the first thing that's going to happen is that you, the user, consumer or whatever, uh, is going to pay that PSP in Bitcoin. So just like if you were paying a bill with a credit card, uh, let's say you go to Target, Walmart, wherever, you would actually make sure that you pay the credit card company uh, and then the credit card company will pay Target. So same thing here, you yourself would actually send that Bitcoin over to the PSP. The Bitcoin will, I mean the PSP will then accept that Bitcoin and convert it over to your US dollars, Euro, whatever, um, and then send it over to the, um, uh, what's it called? The Department of IRS or whoever gets the money, uh, depending on where you're at. And they are going to assume all of the risk on that and you yourself are going to pay a fee for that risk, um, which, you know, I mean, this makes sense because if you can go ahead and just pay your uh, taxes in cryptocurrency and just pay a little bit of a fee, that's a, that's a real big win in my case. Uh, then the PSP will electronically transfer the money uh, over to the state revenue department with taxpayer identifying data. So just make sure that your data is along with it so that the IRS knows um, who's actually paying this. And then from there, the revenue department accepts your payment and sends you a electronic confirmation, AKA a receipt for actually paying your taxes. Um, so the PSP in this case is going to be the major player because they are assuming all of the risk. And since they are the major player, it will kind of depend on, you know, what they, what they determine. Uh, so if the market is down and they say, Hey, we don't want to accept any Bitcoin right now because the market is down. Well, can you actually pay your um, taxes in cryptocurrency. Uh, the states are not wanting to or not looking to actually hold any cryptocurrency or anything like that. Um, again, because if they take $10,000 worth of Bitcoin and Bitcoin crashes, that $10,000 is now only worth $5,000 again. What are they supposed to do? Uh, so they are relying on these PSPs in order to hold that cryptocurrency. They get the actual fungible cash for that, um, the cash fiat of whatnot. And then they are going to do whatever they do with it. And then the PSP are going to have to do what they do with it as well. Uh, so it's really, really interesting to see what's going to happen with that. Uh, I'm going to be keeping track with that, especially, again, now since the crypto winter is technically here. Um, but that's only one side of it. Another side of it is, which is our fourth and last thing that I have to talk with you guys today, is going to be actually taking this cryptocurrency and making it legal tender so that you can use it pretty much everywhere, not just to pay taxes, but to actually um, use it to purchase other items and stuff like that. And one state, Arizona, is actually trying to make this happen. So uh, the Arizona Senator, uh, what's her name? Um, Arizona State Congressman Wendy Rogers has proposed two more crypto-centered bills. So um, in the past, uh, she's had put out a couple of other bills. This article was March 18, 2022. 
Uh, so I'm not sure. I couldn't find anything else on this. So I'm not sure what else has been going on around it, um, especially now with the crypto winter and all that stuff. Uh, but she put out a couple of bills saying that, hey, we want cryptocurrency uh, to become basically legal tender. So let me see. Uh, has proposed two more crypto centered bills. The recommendations contain for charge exception for virtual monetary forms and the capacity to pay state offices in cryptographic money. Uh, a state rep needs to make Arizona the most crypto accommodating state. Um, so definitely, definitely keep an eye out on Arizona uh, since they're trying to be the most crypto accommodating state. It will be very interesting how this, uh, how this actually takes place. Um, Cause again, there's already one bill in place. Um, let's see here. Uh, the main bill recommends that state offices give strategies to acknowledge digital currencies to pay fines, common punishments, lease rates, assessments, charges, or other monetary commitments because of the state. Whenever passed in Arizona Senate, the bill would become successful after December the 31st, 2022. Um, uh, the new bill document expands on a past bill passed in 2018 permitting Arizona occupants to pay annual expenses utilizing Bitcoin or other digital forms of money perceived by the state's income specialists. Uh, so again, guys, this was in 2018 when that actually did go ahead and pass. So it's, like I said, it's going to be, it's going to be quite interesting. There's going to be a lot of people in my opinion that are going to flock over to Arizona just because of this. Um, yeah, they're rolling out the red card for bit or for crypto for sure. They are definitely doing that, um, implying that Arizona occupants will probably get the opportunity to decide on charge exceptions for digital currencies in 2024. Uh, so they're going to roll out that in 2024. Um, these two bills are not the first crypto, current, crypto accommodating recommendations submitted by the Arizona Senate this week. On Friday, Rogers additionally presented a bill intending to make Bitcoin lawful and delicate in Arizona. Uh, currently, the only thing that's there delicate in most states are silver and gold. So adding cryptographic, you know, virtual currency to that will actually be a, a huge win for the cryptocurrency space. Uh, upright since we right up there in line with gold and silver. Um, so that is all I have here for you guys today. Definitely please do let me know. What you think about all of this if you are going to be attending the um, AI data security summit uh, this week or even next week definitely let me know uh, I'll be interested to see what you guys have in store for that I'll be trying to log in virtually pretty much every single day and um, yeah if nothing else you guys have a wonderful rest of the week check out all the links in the description below and I'll catch you all later